Thank you for joining us today for our seminar in the Journey to Science series at Onondaga Community College. Uh, this this se seminar is sponsored by the Bridges to Baccalaureate grant, and we'll have a total of six guests this semester. Patrice is our second one, um, and our guests will share how, how they forged their way in a STEM or STEM related field. Patrice graduated with an AAS in nursing from OCC last December, and she's now a nurse at Syracuse Health, Health Center and at Helio Health in a substance rehabilitation program. Originally, Patrice came from Jamaica and she came to Syracuse via New York City, and she's going to share with us some of her journey to becoming a nurse. So let's welcome Patrice. Um, and thank you for being so generous with your time. As Patrice is talking, if anybody has any questions, there's a little Q&A button and mm -hmm. you can type your questions in there. And at the end of Patrice's talk, um, I will ask her some of the questions that we receive. Let's welcome Patrice. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Patrice Samuels, as Lisi mentioned. I am an OCC grad and I'm super proud to be one of our OCC members here. And I'm currently working full time at um, Syracuse Community Health Center, and I've been there since uh, February. So the way how my journey into science, especially into nursing began, um, kind of bittersweet because my father, he was diagnosed with stage four cancer and he was he had to have surgery that his uh, cancer metastasized to his bones and he had to have surgery and they took time off from work to be with him in that setting um when i were um when we were at um mount sinai hospital in new york city we were there for long hours like you know early in the morning 6 a.m till midnight one o'clock and the nursing staff really embraced us allowed us to be there with my uh, our dad and um that really touched me i t um <clears throat> i'm sorry if i'm breaking up because my father passed this year so talking about dad still gets me but I was moved by the compassion of the nurses towards our family. And I wanted to be able to do that for somebody else. Now, fast forward into 2020, what a year we've had with COVID, right? Um, I hope you and your family are being safe and doing everything that you're supposed to be doing and keeping <clears throat> yourself safe in this crisis. So fast forward, here we are in COVID land, as my DON Tina Mabet says. Um, she, we are here in this time in crisis and this is a new frontier. So this is almost like how the nurses forged back in the 1916 was the influenza outbreak. And we are now pioneers in this new um, this new pandemic with COVID. Um, my team, we were the first ones to start swabbing and doing COVID testing within this region. And I was a part, I was asked to be a part of that team. I'm currently still a part of that team. And I feel honored, like um, here it is that as a new nurse, as a new graduate, I'm on something new, like how Clara Barton and all um, Florence Nightingale, how they pioneered their careers. That's what I'm doing right now with COVID. Um, one of the reasons why I chose community uh, nursing versus a hospital, I absolutely love hospital nursing. It was actually my last semester we had um, role transition. And during that time, I saw a lot of my patients 
and I started to think, had I had the opportunity to be with them two or three months prior to tell them the importance of diabetes, the importance of high blood pressure, and to coach them, help them to make healthier decisions, they wouldn't be in such a critical or a crisis role. So I wanted to be in a setting where I could more educate uh, our patients and the population and Community Health Center at Syracuse allows me to do that. I have more autonomy with patient education. I can talk to them about changing and reinforcing the uh, plans set by their physicians, and I absolutely love that role. Um, also, my journey through science, um, for those who know me, God is huge. <laughs> God is huge part of my journey. Without him, I couldn't be possible. So I have little inspirational things around my desk that reminds me about my faith. This one says, faith doesn't make things easy. It makes it possible. And this one I absolutely love. It says, doubt kills more dreams than failure ever does. So for those of you who are in the nursing program, yes, it's difficult. Yes, it's challenging at times. But guess what? The hardest part is there. You got in. And the fact that you got in, you can make it through. You have to hold on to things like, what is your why? Why are you in this profession? And when you feel like you're going to give up, because trust me, there are times <laughs> when you feel like you want to give up, you have to hold on a strong why that is going to help you persevere through this time. Um, it's also important for you to have accountability partners. I did that my journey through OCC um, nursing program, it was like, oh, go ahead, Patrice, you're awesome, you're all of that. It was a collaboration with God, my family, my accountability partners, my uh, fellow students, my professors, who helped me through this uh, journey. And um, for the nursing students who are starting, make friends with your um, your orientation group. The orientation group that I was a part of, we're still friends today. I've gone to um, two of them, uh, my classmates wedding, and I'm going to another one in October. When times get difficult in the program and you just feel overwhelmed by the course load or the material, there are people in the in our group who were strong and they were able to tutor us and help to break it down to a level that was easily understandable or say, hey, give you a, a, um, a key thought to, to really get that concept or to help you with your skills in clinical. And the, the nursing program is phenomenal with Leanne, Lee, you know, Diane, all the team members are there to help you to realize your dream. Um, when I chose OCC, it wasn't by happenstance, it was intentional. And um, going to the open house and hearing Leanne speak, that was what drew me to the program because all the other nursing schools were telling us like, oh, you know, nursing, this is going to be a hard profession. It's going to be a hard curriculum. Not everybody's going to make it through. Yes, we know that. But I felt like I was a number and not a person. Leanne's speech she gave, um, she said, yes, it's hard, but we meaning her and the faculty are with you as partnering with you to make sure that this is going to be a reality. And I'm like, hmm, that's amazing because not only are they interested with me as a student, they're interested with me as how it, how my dreams matter and how to help me go, go um, achieve these goals. And that is one of the things that I love about 
our nursing um, department. Um, they're there with their education, their experiences. Mary Julie, just go and speak to them and they're here to help you. Peggy, you know, these ladies are phenomenal in what they are doing and to help you get better and stronger so that when you're out in real world situations, you're not faltering and you can be successful. Um, level three, um, on a personal note with me, level three, I almost failed out of OCC with um, during my clinicals. I had, I was on my OB um, clinical and I had a patient who was an RN and it was time for her to give, get her meds. And she was like, okay, I'm an RN because I was going through my checks I was going through the steps that I had to take and she was like, oh, I know all of that. Give me my meds, give me my meds. And I got so flustered by it that I gave her her meds without doing all of my checks. It was the right meds, the right dose, but the whole thing is we have certain checks in place so we won't do med errors. And because of that experience with her, every time I was coming to give another med, I just got flustered and I just messed up that process. And Leeds took me to the side and she's like, Patrice, you're brilliant. Come on, you got this. Don't allow that bad experience to shatter you. And I had to regroup. I spoke with my, um, my advisor. I spoke with Joanne. She went over the med check with me again until I was comfortable again and confident. I was telling Lee the other day that I had a patient at um, another job that I work at and the patient was like, oh, just give me the meds. The same kind of experience I had before and I was able to command that situation and said, look, I am doing this for your safety. Allow me to do my process so you can get the right drugs, you can get it the right time, the right dose for your safety. And it brought the patient down totally. So, you know, I'm grateful for that experience because if I didn't have that experience, maybe I would have been flustered in this, ex in a, in this previous example and probably lost my license. And I can't do that because I sacrificed too much to get here. Um, so my journey to science, I moved from business <laughs> into science. It wasn't the traditional uh, journey like everyone else would have. Um, I took a lot of detours and everything, but I love my destination. I love where I'm at. I love the autonomy that I have. I recently received a promotion at my uh, Syracuse Community Health Center job where I'm now managing uh, other people. And I love where I'm at. And I'm excited about this time, this pandemic, and getting the autonomy to do different skills that I would necessarily be able to take part of or affecting decisions that is, um, is paramount during this time of the season. With nursing, your sky is, oh my God, the sky's the limit. You can go into any type of nursing that you want. I can speak from that front because I'm also a helio health with substance abuse. That's something also that's near and near to my heart, to helping people to get off of the addiction and help them with their journey as they're going through their addiction process. So it's just whatever you want to do, hospital, teaching, uh, community base, uh, ER, <laughs> the sky is the limit. And I hope, you know, you guys have, a, you know, good luck, you know, with your journey. Don't give up. Don't think you can't do it. You have helpers on your way, people who are willing to help you to get to your journey. Just continue to hold on to your why, 
why you're doing this. You know, make it strong enough, not something trivial like, oh, I just want to try to do something. Because when the going gets rough, it's not going to hold you strong enough in order for you to get it. So it has to be a strong enough way where life will bring you excuses for you to quit or to give up. You have to have something that's going to keep you grounded and say, yes, I can do it. Yes, I can make it. Yes, I have to do it because I have no choice. Um, my journey through OCC two years it was difficult from the beginning. You know, it wasn't easy, but um, it's so worth it. My first semester, my best friend died. Um, my oldest friend in the world. We've been friends since I've been 12. And um, my dad had called to, you know, to share that news. I noticed on my phone I had a lot of missed calls and as I previously mentioned, my father had cancer. I was calling him to say, Dad, I'm about to go take my last exam. Let me call you back. And before I could even utter those words, he said, Andrea is dead. I'm like, what? I just broke down into that ugly cry. I, you know, a guttural ball. That's, that's the only thing I could describe it. And Deneen, uh, she heard me and she pulled me into her office and to kind of calm me down to figure out what was going on. And she called my professors, explained what was going on. And she's like, absolutely, you cannot take this exam today. Um, my professors at um, nursing was like, OK, you could take this exam for the next semester. And I'm like, absolutely not, I can't because um, too many stop and starts in my life. And here was life again, given an excuse. The following semester, my mother-in-law had a triple heart bypass surgery. <laughs> then the following uh, semester, my dad got sick. So life is always going to bring obstacles to challenge your why, to challenge your resolve your goal, your determination in finishing the goal that you have for yourself. And it's imperative for you to hold on to that and continue with it. Identify the circle of friends that will motivate you. Put those people around you. Find mentors who are going to talk to you about their experience and will help you guide you on that journey. Um, use the help and the resources that OCC offers. They have an amazing tutoring learning center that, you know, no one should fail. Absolutely no one should fail because the tools are there for you. And um, that's all I can say for right now. If you have any questions, as Lisey mentioned, put them in your, um, your the um, Q&A portion and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Uh, again, thank you so much, Dr. Feeney and Lisa and everyone else who put this um, awesome uh, seminar together and I'm so honored to be a part. Well, Please Patrice, talk. first, uh, thank you so, so very much for taking the time uh, to be here with us today and for sharing everything you did. I'm, I'm inspired right now. I'm like, I want to go back to school now and, you, you know, um, to learn something new. And uh, the way you talked about the obstacles, I see this with so many of our students, right? Nobody has that like perfect life where there are no distractions. There's always going to be a distraction and you certainly had way more than anybody's fair share of distractions as you made your way uh, through nursing school. So it, it's even more inspiring that you you made it through and you finished in two years and and here you are now taking that that sort of gusto for life that you have out into the community. Um, now, um, before you started nursing school, and this may be sort of a, a bad distant memory at this point, but <laughs> you had to go through and complete some prerequisite courses. Yeah. 
um, a lot of students, uh, they struggle, right? They say, all right, I'm going to start with these prerequisites. I'm going to take anatomy and physiology and I'm going to maybe take this math class. And uh, they feel very overwhelmed. How did you feel at that point in time and what helped you to get through those preparatory classes to be able to start nursing school? Um, some of my, well, uh, some of my uh, prereqs for nursing school, I did them while I was in nursing school. So that was like, <laughs> like AMP. I did AMP one and two uh, with nursing one. I did AMP two during the summer. Um, my microbiology, um, I did that because I got into nursing school for January. So I love that I had the two summers where I could finish my uh, prereqs and uh, that helped a lot. Um, but where it came to science, I love science. The chemistry, I, I love chemistry, physics, that gets me like going. Um, biology, not so much, you know, especially with the names and you have to pronounce them. It, that gets me frustrated, but I found classmates who were strong in that and who could give me tricks to remember that. Um, so with and with um, AMP, while I was doing AMP, I took advantage of the learning center to help me through that. Even though if I wasn't struggling, I signed up immediately day one with the Learning Center for AMP. And every day after class, I would go and meet with my tutor to go over the notes, to reinforce what I learned in class. So at the time for the exams, I wouldn't have to study so much and it would have already been in my mind. To the point that I tutor AMP and all of these things now. So it does, you know, as I stated, take advantage of OCC. They have amazing resources there. Um, some of these classes were difficult, but the resources are there. The professors were amazing was opening up their doors like their office hours are not just to say that they have office hours they genuinely mean that they want you to come in for you to discuss any concepts you're having difficulties with and utilize them because they're there to help you everyone there is working with you to really realize those dreams so take advantage of the resources that are available to you. Wow, well, that, that's uh, some high praise for the OCC services and a, and a true learning center success story. You've come full circle where now you are the tutor and the teacher. Um, something else, perhaps more on the sort of philosophical side. Um, now you're fully immersed in the community. You're, you're uh, working at Helio Health and, and uh, with the COVID testing. What are you excited about next? Do you have any big plans? Oh, I'm excited about my next. I'm, I'm pursuing um, my BSN and next uh, after that is I want to become a nurse practitioner. So I'm excited about that next journey and that next step. So I'm super excited about that and how to, you know, bring community health and meeting the needs of everyone, as well as I love psych. Um, especially during this time, I find that I'm talking to the patient, um, listening to them, they're opening up to me, um, telling me what they're dealing with, and especially in the climate that we are, where there's a lot of isolation. So many people, feel so alone, so depressed because they can't engage with family because either they're in one of those states that are high risk states and they can't see their loved one. So that touch, that feel, you know, that human contact is really missing and they're getting depressed. So we're going to see a huge, once COVID ends, you know, whatever that is, we're going to deal with a high rate of depression, I believe. 
and um, we're going to need people who are committed to their mental health to help people cope with that or even in the midst of this pandemic to reach out to people, check in on your neighbors, check in on loved ones, making sure that they're okay. If you find yourself that you're, you're, you're going through, don't suffer in silence, please reach out. And, you know, at the Community Health Center, we have an amazing CAPS department that they're there to counsel you and they have, you know, a lot of telehealth or you can come in for in-person counseling. Don't suffer in silence because we just don't want to care for your physical health, but your whole health, your mental health as well. Wow, uh, Patrice, I feel like you're such an asset to the community. Um, you, you're in all these different places doing all these different things and I can just imagine of the lives you're touching with the things you're doing and the things you're um, going to do. Um, do you have any parting words for um, our students? Um, sure. Life is all, one of the things I love to say is life is always going to give you an excuse it, and it's up to you not to succumb to it. A quote that our former president, Barack Obama, has shared. Let me get it. This is one of those quotes that I lived my life with. It says, excuses are the tools of the incompetent. They build bridges to nowhere and monuments of nothingness. So stop giving yourself excuses like, no, I can't do nursing. No, I can't be an engineer. No, I can't be everything. They are, you know, get rid of them. You have a brilliant mind. Anything you think of, you can create. And it's up to you to believe in yourself that you can do it and just do it because you can do it. And I'm so excited to know where your life and your journey is going to take you. And I want uh, Lisi, you know, if you share where your journey is taking you, I would love to know that because I want to know your contribution to our society because I need you. I need that genius that's in your mind. And thank you guys so much for this opportunity to come into your home on a Saturday or wherever you are to kind of share a portion of who I am. God bless you. Bye-bye. Uh, well, thank you again so very much for sharing your time again on a Saturday afternoon, Patrice. All of us really, really appreciate you taking the time. Um, for those of you watching the recording on YouTube, uh, there's a survey link that's going to be posted below. Uh, it's seven quick questions that will help us to make these seminars better. Let us know what improvements you'd like to see uh, so we can bring you the kinds of speakers that you want to hear. Have the speakers talk about what you are interested in. and. Um, that finishes up our seminar for today, but I'd like to invite you back on October 7. Uh, we will be hearing from Keandra Horton. She is also a graduate of OCC and uh, she is currently uh, working on her uh, RN uh, license at St. Joe's College of Nursing. So come back on October 7 at 12.30 p.m. The link will be sent out to the campus. And I hope to see you back then. And again, Patrice, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye.